So, is the LG G3 the TV of the year for 2023? It could be. Hello and welcome to another video on AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, the site editor, and I'm a fully trained ISF and THX calibrator with 20 years of experience. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new LG G3 OLED EVO TV. The G3 is the first 4K flagship model from LG in 2023, and it features for the first time Micro Lens Array MLA technology, which is a layer of billions of micrometer sized convex lenses that are fixed to the pixels that capture and direct light, usually lost within the traditional OLED panel, and it redirects this light towards the viewer. By doing this, LG has managed to boost the brightness and viewing angle substantially. This is married to the Brightness Booster Pro processing that uses a brightness enhancing algorithm, which then improves both the screen brightness and color by analyzing and adjusting the brightness of each scene in real time and adding more specular details and much better just above black detail to enhance the HDR performance. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a few minutes. The G3 is available in screen sizes ranging from 55, 65, 77 and 83 inches, but be aware that the 83 inch does not have the MLA or Brightness Booster Pro technology and it only claims a 30% brightness boost compared to the other screens which achieve a claimed 80% increase. We've looked at both a retail sample 55 inch G3 and an LG supplied 65 inch review sample over the last five weeks and we've managed to get a very good idea of just how this TV performs over a wide range of content and uses. The 55 inch LG C3 has been supplied for review by UK retailer Peter Tyson and it will stay with us for long term testing for at least the next six months. We also have access to all the flagship TVs which will be available to us on a long-term basis this year so we can do in-depth comparisons and further videos with them. We need to thank Peter Tyson for their assistance in providing actual retail units for us and if you want to support our video reviews and this channel and you're perhaps looking for a new TV then please visit their e-commerce website at petertyson.co.uk or you can get more details in the description below including a time-sensitive discount voucher for you to use on their website. Many thanks for your support. We go into the picture quality measurements in detail within the written review on AV forums, so head over and read all the details of the out of the box and calibrated results there. We fully measured and tested the out of the box settings as well as calibrating the G3 and putting it through some very rigorous testing including side by side comparisons with its closest rivals. If you want to know what the best settings are out of the box for the LG G3, then you can also check out our settings video. In the HDR filmmaker mode, the 55 LG G3 measures in at 1361 nits on a 10% industry standard window and 207 nits on a full screen 100% window. The 65 inch model measures in at 1378 nits on a 10% window and 212 nits full screen. Those are incredibly consistent results between the two screen sizes and are also exceptional for an OLED TV in an accurate picture preset. The LG will go much brighter in other picture presets, but we are only interested in accurate image quality to the standards at AV forums. As we keep saying, peak brightness is only one part of the HDR image, but the G3 is a big step up when it comes to the available dynamic range and the full screen brightness to boot. Add in the tone mapping based on actual mastering display metadata and you have a very capable HDR display indeed. With PQ EOTF tracking to ST2084, the G3 uses different maps based on the mastering display metadata. So for 1000 and 4000 nit signals, there are slightly different tone maps. For 1000 nit, it follows the standards precisely and then it hard clips at the peak brightness. With 4000 nit master content, it rolls off more gently towards the peak brightness point before it then hard clips. And this is an attempt to preserve the highlight details. Leave a constant APL scene on the G3 over time and it doesn't dim down the image. So you can watch some tricky scenes like the desert crossing in June without the G3 dimming the image so it becomes unwatchable as some of the competition do. 
The wide colour gamut performance is also very good on the G3 with tracking points close to where they should be for saturation and the gamut size is very good indeed, providing an excellent performance for HDR content. We measured BT2020 at 72% XY and 75% UV, with P3 coming in at 97% XY and 99% UV on the 65 inch, and BT2020 at 73% and 73% UV, with P3 at 97% and 97% UV on the 55 inch panel. Moving to screen uniformity and with a 5% brightness field pattern, we could just make out some very faint vertical band seen when viewing in a pitch black room. However, with actual dark scene in movies, viewed in dark surroundings, we didn't notice the banding at all. Moving through the other brightness field patterns, we also didn't see any examples of dirty screen effect DSE or vignetting to the panel edges. There was also no colour shift or tinting when we watched directly onto the screen or from the wider angles. Motion reproduction for 24 frames per second material is also very good with no induced judder and it looks cinematic with the correct 5.5 pull down applied when true motion is switched off. With OLED's instant response time, some may see some sample and hold judder when viewing 24 frames per second content, and you might want to consider using the cinematic movement setting as this adds some slight interpolation that smooths the motion out without really adding any soap opera effect. Other settings for motion under true motion add too much smoothing, uh, which also adds in some artifacts around fast moving objects, so it's best avoided. Broadcast material at 50Hz is also clean and has great motion with no signs of frame skipping or unwanted artefacts, even when there's fast cuts or movement between scenes. Video processing continues to be a big step up this year with the new LG G3 turning in some of the very best upscaling on the market. Low resolution content is upscaled with confidence to the native resolution of the panel with no signs of edge enhancement bringing to fine edges or junk pixels. SDR images are superb on the LG G3 with excellent accuracy to the grayscale and Rec 709 color gamut out of the box in filmmaker mode. With movie content, there is a cinematic sheen that brings images to life with superb just above black detail retrieval that's some of the best available. Added to improved mid-tone performance and colours that are natural and accurate with lifelike skin tones, you have some of the very best SDR images available from any TV as things stand. Even normal broadcast content looks detailed and colourful with the extra brightness available making the G3 a valid choice for brighter room viewing. Added to that is the new screen anti-reflective coating that also helps in very bright rooms. HDR10 and Dolby Vision viewing on the LG G3 is a revelation this year with a clear uptick in image performance compared to last year's G2. Superb just above black detail retrieval makes the most of the HDR performance of the G3 with mid-tone details adding real depth and three-dimensional feeling to the images that other screens being compared were just not capable of reproducing. Dynamic range is scintillating on the G3 and without adding to the hype, it really is a step up from last year. We'll cover a lot more of this in the comparison section. Again, we go into the picture measurements and comparisons in much greater detail within the written review at AV Forums for those of you who like to nitpick through the data, so head over there and read the review. The LG G3 is identical in terms of design and chassis to the outgoing G2 model with no cosmetic differences seen at all. And that's not a bad thing as the G3 is a gorgeous looking minimalist design with a consistent panel depth that makes it sink against a wall when it's mounted, giving it a very flush finish against the wall surface. It also ships with a wall mount so you can take advantage of this design and the clever cable management system to get the TV mounted flush against the wall. But this is also where we have a real problem with the Gallery Series TV, and that is that it has to be wall mounted. It was fine when the performance panel and the processor were the same between the C Series and the G Series. You picked the cosmetic design that you preferred, and 
If that was a table mount, you went with the C series, and if you wanted a wall mount, you went with the G series. But now that LG has added some real performance differences in the G series, it no longer makes any sense to us that you should just wall mount the G series TV. Indeed, not everyone will want to mount it, and those people either miss out on the G series or need to buy the optional stand from LG at quite a markup, or they get themselves a visa-based tabletop stand like we did for the 55-inch model. What they should do is have two SKU versions with one with the expensive wall mount for those who want to wall mount the TV and another with a really well sturdy, well designed stand to be included for those who want to tabletop mount stand it. And why not have that with a luxury TV? The supplied remote control with the LG C3 is sadly the same old black plastic affair that we've seen for a number of years now with no backlight and it really feels cheap and nasty. Again, for such a luxury TV aimed at a certain sector of the market, we're really surprised that LG is not supplying a nicely designed metal faced remote with a backlight. Certainly the competition manages to do that with their premium sets and it makes LG look a little bit cheap in comparison. The sound quality on the G3 is the one major weak point. So either get yourself an LG soundbar that works with the WOW Orchestra features, or you can use an external sound system as the TV's built-in sound is no better than serviceable, really. Gaming, on the other hand, is superb on the G3. The LG G3 is one of the very best gaming TVs currently available on the market. And just like the C3 we tested recently, it offers four full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 48Gbit per second inputs with EARC 4K 120 gaming that includes Dolby Vision HDR, NVIDIA G-Sync AMD FreeSync Premium and VRR support along with ALLM which is Auto Low Latency Mode and a game menu and optimizer along with a measured input lag of 9 milliseconds with 4K 60 signals and half that again with 120 signals. We're about to show you some side-by-side -side comparison shots on video, but please bear in mind that these are not representative of what I can see in person. They are captured by a camera with a restricted dynamic range, edited and then compressed to upload to YouTube, and then further compressed and changed by YouTube before you see them on your display, which is probably not calibrated. So it'll look different again to what I see here in person. So these clips are really for illustration only. We put the G3 up against the brand new Samsung S95C QD OLED and this is probably the most anticipated comparison of 2023 to see if the two flagships using slightly different approaches to OLED technology can better each other. The short answer here is that this is very close indeed with just the smallest of margins and of course personal choice separating the screens. We set both the LG G3 and Samsung S95C to filmmaker mode out of the box and set about a few hours of side-by-side -side testing. The difference between the look of white varies between QD OLED and WRGB and it's very noticeable when side-by-side -side in comparisons. Personally, in most cases, I prefer the white which is produced by QD OLED as it isn't as cyan looking as the G3 and it looks a little bit more natural and warmer given its magenta push. It certainly comes down to the difference in the panels and their makeup, with the white pixel adding that cyan tint to WRGB. However, if you get the screens in isolation, you really can't make out any of the different tints that you can see when they're next to each other. For overall picture quality, it's very difficult to separate each screen for colour and grayscale accuracy, and it's other attributes that tend to stand out. The LG G3 looks more natural and lifelike with most SDR and HDR movie content as the S95C is just a tad too red and looks a little hot in comparison. Blacks are also better on the G3 with much better just above black detail retrieval and that results in a slightly better image depth and detail to the eye. But we're really talking about tiny details after hours of side by side viewing. There's no doubt that each screen looks bright and vivid when the content calls for it and the S95C has a slight edge for colour volume where it's required, which is infrequent if we're being honest, but it does have an edge. In terms of peak brightness, the G3 just looks a little bit more dynamic, married to its slightly better mid-tones and blacks, but again, the margins are very tight. With regards to SDR and HDR viewing in a bright room, both screens produce an image that competes with the very best LED LCD TVs on the market and the old argument for LCD only in bright rooms is no longer the case in my opinion. 
these two work perfectly well. The result is probably a draw, but in my opinion, the LG just pips it for overall quality with the better image processing, motion and upscaling, married to an image that just has a tad more dynamic range and depth. It also, for the majority of current movie content, matches the QD OLED for colour brightness and it only just misses out on colour volume. And the Samsung doesn't have Dolby Vision, which will be an issue for many users. If you are looking for a flagship TV this year, you have a hell of a choice to make. Both of these are stunning TVs. We will compare the G3 to other flagship TVs from Panasonic, Philips and Sony, and that will happen as those sets become available. So consider subscribing to the channel to see those videos when they happen. We had one other flagship 4K TV from Samsung sitting around, the Mini LED QN95C, so we put that next to the G3 and we set both TVs to filmmaker mode. On paper, the Mini LED Samsung QN95C should be the far brighter TV in this comparison and better suited to bright room viewing. Plus, it should also have better colour volume. For SDR content, it certainly is slightly brighter than the G3, but it's not as night and day as you would imagine. And the G3 is now a TV that I would quite happily put into a brighter environment with no fears of image washout or an image that looks too dark. The new screen filter on the G3 also helps with reflections and it does so without adding a rainbow across the screen like the QN95C does. Black levels and dynamic range are better on the LG G3 with OLED's advantage shining through here with no signs of blooming or clouding that could be an issue with mini LED sets. What the QN95C does to combat blooming is to dim bright highlights that are against slightly darker backgrounds. But in doing this, it kills the dynamic range seen in the image. In comparison, this is very obvious in person, with the G3 able to produce stunning bright highlights next to complete black thanks to the per pixel switching of OLED. Even with the latest mini LED backlight technology and the amount of zones the QN95C has, it still has to dim down the brightest parts of the image to stop blooming. In terms of video processing, we found again that the LG G3 had the edge here for image processing, motion and upscaling, with the QN95C having a slight edge with colour volume and overall full screen brightness. Overall, I would personally pick the LG G3 given its improvement in bright room viewing, better image processing, motion and upscaling, and along with the more dynamic HDR presentation compared to the QN95C, which uses blooming suppression that really affects its overall dynamic range. Plus, if Dolby Vision is important to you, the QN95C still doesn't support the format. Come on, Samsung. So let's wrap this up. Every now and again, a TV comes along that moves the game to another level. Last year, it was the release of Samsung Display's QD OLED first generation panel that Samsung and Sony used for their flagship OLED TVs, which changed the TV landscape and it arrived on a wave of excitement and over the top hype. This year, LG has responded with a massive upturn in WRGB image performance by adding MLA Micro Lens Array to the panel and also meta processing from the Alpha 9 Gen 6 4K processor, which significantly boosts image brightness, but also color depth with much better image tone mapping processing that gives us some of the very best HDR images we've yet seen from a WRGB OLED. Image quality and depth are stunning with excellent black levels, superb just above black detail retrieval and stunning color reproduction mixed with some of the best upscaling motion on the market. There's no question that LG has raised the bar with WRGB OLED image quality and taken the fight straight back to Samsung and Sony in the battle for flagship TV dominance. And this kind of competition is great. It gives anyone looking for a TV to buy this year a real headache, but of course that's a great thing, having that competition. The LG G3 is certainly worthy of 10 out of 10 top marks when it comes to image quality, video processing, gaming credentials, and HDR. And as things stand, it's definitely the best WRGB OLED TV the company has ever produced. So it's a best in class. Don't forget the full in-depth review at AV Forums goes into all of this in much greater detail, so head over and check it out. And if you enjoyed this review, then please do leave us a like. And if you want to see more TV reviews from AV Forums, including our thoughts on the 2023 flagship models, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.